So this is the uh, setup we have. So we actually have some targets on our uh, engine block here, and that's what these dots are. Those are the targets that the C track, this guy here, is looking at. And this is actually the volume that it's seeing, like everything within its uh, peripheral vision. So right now it's seeing six of the eight targets that I identified on it. So if I actually move the engine block around, we can see it move around in the screen. Wow, so that actually allows you to move the engine as you scan and still know where it's at in space? Yeah, we just rotate around and then keep scanning without having to like stop and redo any calibration or anything. And then you were mentioning before the, the scan spots on the bottom that you have down here on the stand allow you to swivel? Yeah, so if I rotate it too far and the um, scanner, the C-Track no longer see them, these are specific swivel targets that we can uh, just rotate so we can have the... Uh, C-Track picking back up and then I identified it in the program. It saw the target, I clicked on the target and said that's a swivel target. So now it knows, oh, so I can see that and it'll be rotating about this axis and stuff. That's pretty awesome. whenever it loses uh, tracking on what it's looking at and then I can just bring it back as soon as it recognizes what's going on it just starts to pick right back up where you left off. So I can walk in That's front impressive. of the C-Track, loses where it's at, picks it back up and then we just go right back to uh, scanning. That's impressive. So as I'm scanning around on this part, I can actually go down to the back of this, even scan the data back here without having to rotate the engine block or anything. But if we wanted to, if I can go ahead and grab this engine block and I can rotate it. Now I can pick back up scanning and it knows exactly where it is. So you're no longer stuck to just being in one spot when you start a scan. You can actually be fluid with it and move around. Yeah. When we're scanning the part, uh, it's actually scanning at low resolution. So this is actually a low resolution scan right now. This isn't at all what we're going to be getting out of it. We'll get out a lot higher quality uh, mesh. So it scans at low resolution so that way it can spend all its power uh, picking up all the point data as we're getting it because okay. we have hundreds of thousands of points on this now that's making this tight mesh. So then as soon as I stop the scan, now it's going to go ahead and process it into a actual finished scan part. And then the uh, high resolution you export it out to, the finer looking the mesh will be and tighter corners and everything. Okay. Um, so a cool thing about that is that when you're scanning it and it's in that low resolution state, it's actually scanning at max resolution. And then what we tell it to export out to is uh, dependent on what we tell it. So if we say, oh, I wanted a high resolution scan of this and I'm already done scanning it, we have yeah. all that data. Now I just say, oh, you know what? Give me a higher export now. And we don't have to okay. go rescan it. So we capture all the data up front, and then it's just how we post-process it on the end, yep. roughly? Yeah. I mean, in yeah. layman's terms. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we don't have to go back and redo work and say, oh, I scanned it at the wrong settings. We scan it. We have all that data, and now we can choose what level to output it out to. That's awesome. So we stopped our scan. Now we have our higher resolution output that we can actually go in and look at and say, okay, here's what we got. Um, 
you know, I'm missing. And this is now where we can check, like, oh, I need to go in and get more detail in, like, these areas to make sure I get around these edges a little bit better, maybe farther into the hole if we need it. Mainly we just mean these outside mounting surfaces. So instead of having to, like, start the whole scan over again to go find those areas I need to clean up, get a little bit more detail on, I can just go start the scan back up and then just immediately start scanning those areas and I don't have to restart anything or redo anything. And so there's no calibration needed. You basically just nope. pick it up and start fill, yeah, filling in? Yeah, we've already calibrated. The thing's already referenced to the Z-Track. So even if we had moved this around, we're like, all right, cool, push it out of the way, go look, look to the laptop, we just wheel it back and uh, just start scanning again. And it just fills in all the missing pieces. So there's even, if you notice, there's a, uh, a little sensor on the left side of the screen. So that bar that's like yellow, green, blue, um, that's showing how close I am to the park. So green is your good zone. So this basically gives you a quick depth of field. So it's saying, oh, you're okay. too far away from your park, you're too close to your park. And it makes it really easy to pick up a good scan of it because it's telling you, and it even has some LED lights on the back of the scanner. So it's showing green, red, yellow, blue. Oh yeah, so it's real-time feedback. Yeah, so now it. I don't have to be standing here staring, looking over my shoulder at the screen the whole time. I can just look on here and know where I'm look, scanning and then, you know, I can get my real feedback from too close, too far away. Alright, so this is the, uh, this is our scan mesh that we have right now. Um, and then just for a quick overview of, uh, if I wanted to show how to do reverse engineering, just right off the bat, what I'd go in is I'd grab, like, my Create Plane tool. And then we have all these different selection features here. And I can go in and actually grab, because uh, this is just a mesh of triangles. So now we need to actually start making a parametric solid out of it in SolidWorks that we can actually do stuff with and model around. So I say, all right, there's a plane here. I'm going to grab it. And I, right now, my selection set is to everything with a similar normal. So I went ahead and grabbed this whole selection of triangles that had a similar normal, so that plane. We can even see the air distribution of our selection. So within our tolerance of uh, 0.037 millimeters. We have a 97% selection within that. And we can increase and shrink our tolerance, our selection and everything, add more to it. Then I can just hit create. And that creates this plane here within the program. So this is what makes uh, this software really good for reverse engineering with because getting the CAD data is, or the scan data is not that hard, right? We go in and we scan it and we get all our mesh. Now what we do with our mesh to get something useful out of it is something like this where I can go in grab this selection set, create a plane. I can do that for all these different uh, bodies. And I can just create these real quick without getting too into it. Um, so now I have these entities I've created and this actually has a direct uh, API with SolidWorks. So I can actually go up here to this transfer to SolidWorks button. I can just click transfer to SolidWorks. And it's gonna send this right over to SolidWorks and open it up as planes and sketches and all that data that we brought over. So these are the exact planes uh, from where we brought them in. And I can keep going through and doing that. Now I can go in, I could extract uh, circle data. I can say, okay, constrain these bolt pattern circles to this plane, send that over to SolidWorks. Now I have my exact bolt pattern and actually what we're gonna do with it. And we can go in and start extruding and cutting and it, wow. it's really, really easy. <laughs> yeah, that's, that was pretty fast. <laughs> um, wow, that's impressive. Thank you.